America's top diplomat calls climate change the world's most fearsome weapon of mass destruction. This is Special Report. Good evening, I'm Brett Baer. As Iran and North Korea continue their suspected work on nuclear weapons, and Syria drags its feet on its promise to turn over its chemical weapons, Secretary of State John Kerry says the most dangerous weapon of them all is climate change. It's the latest volley in the administration's campaign to put global warming front and center as a political talking point heading into the midterm elections. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel begins our coverage tonight. In a sense, climate change can now be considered another weapon of, war, of, of, of mass destruction, perhaps even the world's most fearsome weapon of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction, as in a nuclear blast or biological or chemical attack, the latest attempt by the Obama administration to grab attention for its environmental agenda. This is mushy thinking at best. Uh, you know, a few years ago, people decided that global warming was a national security threat because they knew national security threats bring to mind the most severe kind of threat that the country faces. In Indonesia, the world's third largest country in terms of carbon emissions behind China and the United States, Kerry mocked those who don't share his beliefs. Now, President and I, Obama and I believe very deeply <coughs> that we do not have time for a meeting anywhere of the flat earth society. It's been a cold and harsh winter even in places such as North Carolina and Georgia where conditions tend to be milder. North Carolina's Republican governor called for common sense. But the whole issue of uh, cleaning the environment, I think, is the issue we ought to talk about more than getting to a debate from the left and the right about uh, climate change or global warming. On Friday, the president went to drought-stricken California to call for government spending to address the problem in the form of a billion-dollar fund in his next budget and warned more extreme conditions may be on the way. Uh, a change in climate means that weather-related disasters like droughts Wildfires, storms, floods are potentially going to be costlier and they're going to be harsher. Though the New York Times noted Mr. Obama and his aides were pushing the boundaries of scientific knowledge about the relationship between climate change and drought. And quote, there is no scientific consensus yet that it is a worldwide phenomenon, nor is there definitive evidence that it is causing California's problems. Lawmakers note in July 2009, the White House and then Speaker Nancy Pelosi pushed Democratic members to back cap and trade, a carbon crackdown which didn't go anywhere in the Senate. The vote damaged some House Democrats in the 2010 midterms, and Republicans note, it was rejected. Well, I think the president should realize Congress has taken action. Whether it was cap and trade or boiler backed or any of these regulations, we have said no to that. Though the left is still upset, it didn't happen back then. Heading into the 2014 election cycle, this could be an attempt to fire up liberal donors and voters and give Democratic candidates something beyond Obamacare and stimulus to talk about. Brett? On this with the panel, Mike, thanks. Well, do you consider climate change a weapon of mass destruction? Let me know at facebook.com slash SR or on Twitter at Brett Bear. You can use the hashtag special report. You've heard the administration's outline of the problem. Now, one of its intended solutions. Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen on new rules for coal and the astounding price tag for you and your family. Among the farthest reaching of President Obama's proposed environmental regulations currently in the public comment stage is one that would require all new coal-burning power plants built in the U.S. to be outfitted with so-called carbon capture and storage technology, or CCS. Presently, only one such plant, being built in Mississippi and set to come online later this year, has even begun testing CCS on a commercial scale. And deep into a House Energy and Commerce Committee hearing last Tuesday, a top energy aide to President Obama acknowledged how steep the transitional costs of this technology will be. Could y'all give the committee or the subcommittee a uh, kind of a baseline estimate of how much it adds to the cost? We're looking at uh, something on the order uh, 70 to 90 dollars a ton 
in that context that looks something like a 70 to 80 percent increase on the wholesale price of electricity. Those costs are expected to go down as CCS technology becomes more accessible and as the carbon dioxide captured and stored by a given coal plant is sold by the plant to say an oil drilling firm. But the initial outlays are formidable and they could lead along with other Obama administration mandates to Americans being dependent on a less diverse and less robust energy supply. Under the Environmental Protection Agency's math rule, which takes effect in April 2015, all coal-burning power plants will be required to make steep reductions in the mercury, acid gases, and toxic metals they emit. For over 20 years, special interest groups had successfully delayed implementing uh, these standards when it came to our nation's power plants. And what we said was enough. In December, the U.S. Energy Information Administration, or EIA, published this projection of how many gigawatts of coal-fired power capacity will be lost by 2016 as the deadline for Matt's rule compliance approaches. A mere two months later, EIA has revised its projection upwards by some 50 percent. By 2020, there'll be about 66,000 megawatts of uh, coal power plants retired. Uh, that's about 20 percent of all the coal-fired capacity in the country. That'd be sufficient to power uh, about 50 million homes. In 2012 alone, over 10.2 gigawatts of coal-fired capacity was retired. That's more than 3% of the total capacity that had existed the year before that. Brett? James, thank you. Unemployment is once again the number one problem in the country. That's according to a new Gallup poll. 23% of those surveyed felt that way. The economy next at 20%. Dissatisfaction with government, politicians and leaders slips from first to third. Concerns over climate change did not break into the top 10. Today is the anniversary of the president's first major legislative victory, the stimulus. It was supposed to create or save three and a half million jobs. Chief White House correspondent Ed Henry tonight on what really happened. President Obama celebrated the fifth anniversary of the American Recovery Act quietly, playing golf for the third straight day in sunny Rancho Mirage, California, leaving his staff back in snowy Washington to play some defense over his economic record amid a barrage of attacks from the right. Maybe the most expensive policy mistake ever made in Washington. I call it tooth fairy economics, right? That the money just comes down from the tooth fairy. But of course, you have to pay those bills. Senior advisor Dan Pfeiffer fired back by tweeting, quote, just say no wasn't an agenda five years ago and isn't today. GOP attacks on the Recovery Act are a perfect example of the delusional messaging that makes them appear out of touch. The most sweeping economic recovery package in our history. The stimulus was the president's first major domestic achievement, and like health care, which came later, it's still generating controversy years after he signed it into law in Denver. It will create or save three and a half million jobs over the next two years, including 60,000 plus here in Colorado. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell said today those lofty projections have fallen well short, declaring, quote, it is now clear that bold White House predictions about stimulus jobs saved and created were just a prelude to later pledges about keeping your doctors and falling premiums. The White House pushed back with a new report from economic aide Jason Furman using a creative term, job years, to claim the law has been a success, declaring, quote, the Recovery Act by itself saved or created about six million million job years, where a job year is defined as one full-time job for one year. This translates to an average of 1.6 million jobs a year for four years through the end of 2012. Vice President Biden, who oversaw the spending of the stimulus money, recently made the case it worked. Here's what we did. That act five years ago, we invested $48 billion in infrastructure. Except many Americans still do not feel the impact, with a recent Fox News poll about the economy showing 58% believe the worst is yet to come. 37% think the worst is over. This was the worst bang for the buck ever. For the president to say, for once I agree with him, when he said, yeah, I guess we weren't shovel ready, which is true, because we lost so much money. Now, a string of Republicans noted today that the nation is now $17 trillion in debt, and there are 20 million people who are either unemployed or underemployed. Though the president will have an economic event tomorrow where he'll continue to make the case that since 2010, he's created 8.5 million jobs. Brett? 
At Henry Live on the North Lawn, Ed, thank you. The acting head of the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement is leaving after just six months on the job. John Sandweg is a former defense attorney who raised funds for Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano during her political career. His appointment to the post raised eyebrows because of his scant law enforcement experience. Sandwick says he will return to the private sector, but gave no reason for his departure. Up next, how much blame should President Obama get for the deteriorating situation in Syria? But first, here's what some of our Fox affiliates across the country are covering tonight. Fox 29 in Philadelphia with a 19-year-old woman already charged with murder, claiming she has killed more than 20 other people as part of a satanic cult. WSVN in Miami with wounded warriors gone fishing. These injured vets were treated to a day of boating and fishing in South Florida thanks to the Wounded Warrior Project. And this is a live look at Boston from Fox 25, our affiliate there. The big story there tonight is more snow on the way. Hard to believe. Three to five inches expected around that city. They've already had more than 53 inches of snow this season. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. We'll be right back.